In this video we're going to look at using the Pearson 2 key formula to estimate the parameters of a task time distribution. This is covered at the end of the chapter I gave you to read um, on schedule risk. And uh, this formula has been shown to be more accurate than the, than the classic PERT approximation. Um, I just want to go through the formula itself here briefly. Um, the formula treats the three numbers we've been given differently, and that's that's maybe the most important uh, difference between this formula and the classic PERT formula. In the classic PERT formula, remember we were given three estimates, the optimistic, pessimistic, and most likely, and we treated those as the minimum, maximum, and modal value in our uh, beta PERT distribution. The What we're going to do now is treat the uh, the most likely value no, no longer is the mode, but instead is the median. And this comes from experimentation that has shown people most often, if you ask them what's the most likely value, they try to pick about the middle value. They're better at picking the middle value than the modal value. And we're no longer going to be treating the optimistic and pessimistic as the minimum and the maximum. We're going to be treating the pessimistic as the 95th percentile. What that means is that when we ask our subject matter experts to give us a pessimistic estimate of the time it will take, we assume that about 5%, there's about a 5% chance that the time will actually be longer than that. And when we ask them to give us an optimistic estimate, we assume there's about a 5% chance that the task will actually be shorter than this. And this again comes from experiments that people have done that shows people are not particularly good at estimating uh, tail probabilities and especially extreme values, the minimum and the maximum. So we're going to treat those not as, as the minimum and the maximum, but as slightly less than the maximum and slightly, slightly greater than the minimum. This formula for the mean task time has the interesting property that you begin with the median. So and the mean will equal the median, right, if the task is not skewed, if the distribution is not skewed. If it's uh, symmetrical, for example, the median will equal the mean. And then we're going to adjust that. And this adjustment then is dealing with the skewness of the distribution. So we have this small factor, about 0.185 adjustment, based on uh, and it can be positive or negative based on whether the sum of the maximum and the minimum is greater than or less than two times the median value. That will be our uh, estimate of the mean task time and it may be bigger or smaller than the PERT estimates depending on whether this adjustment is positive or negative. So let's look at it in practice here in our sample problem. So here's our sample problem from the last video. We have the same uh, five, six tasks, requirements analysis, programming, hardware acquisition, user training, implementation and testing embedded in the same precedence network. We have the data that we've been given from the subject matter experts, optimistic, pessimistic, and most likely. But now rather than using them in the classic PERT formula, um, um, optimistic plus pessimistic plus four times the most likely, we're going to embed them in this Pearson 2 key formula. The other thing that I've done is I've um, I've modified the formulas, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I've given as well not just the variance according to the classic per formula, but I've taken the square root of that to calculate the standard deviation so that we can compare later uh, the estimates of standard deviation as well. The pearson tukey formula gives you an estimate of the standard deviation, not the variance. All right, what we're starting with is the, is the duration, an estimate of the mean. And according to pearson tukey that should be the uh, median value, and we're going to treat their estimate of likely, the likely value as the median value, plus 0.185 times the min, the uh, the optimistic value, which we're now treating as uh, something that'll happen, it, it, uh, the value will be greater than that 95% of the time, plus the pessimistic value, the value will be less than that 95% of the time, minus 2 times the most likely value. And this becomes our estimate now of the mean, which you can see is slightly bigger than the than the PERD estimate. And um, if you look at this data, what you'll see is that in every case except one, the optimistic plus the pessimist is going to be larger than two times the most likely. What that means is that we'll have a mean slightly larger than the median, as uh, happens as often happens when the um, when a, a distribution is skewed to the right. It is a positive skew. So um, this is uh, uh, this adjustment adjusts for the skewness of the distribution and accounts for the fact that sometimes the mean will be greater than the median, sometimes it will be less than the median. 
The only case in our data where it'll be less is here in task C. Uh, 2 plus 13, 15 is going to be less than the 16, so our estimate of the duration for that one will be slightly lower. So let's copy this formula down, and we'll see that. So um, as you can see, for every task, our estimate of the mean duration under the pearson tukey formula is slightly bigger, except for task C, hardware acquisition, where it's actually slightly less, accounting for uh, what may be a negative skew in that data, a uh, left skew in that data. All right, the formula for the standard deviation from the previous slide, uh, we're no longer, um, well, let's go back and look at it very briefly. And um, uh, the task time standard deviation is, uh, now what's in the numerator are the same numbers, the pessimistic minus the optimistic, but now we're no longer assuming that's the whole range of the data. We're assuming that represents about 90% of the data. So uh, the, 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 the range that contains 90% of the data divided by 3.25. Now before we were estimating the variance, we divided by 36. Square root of 36 is 6. And so what we have here is a smaller denominator than under the classic PERT estimate. Instead of 6, it's 3.25. And consequently, our standard deviations will be slightly larger. Um, and uh, let's see that. So the 95th percentile minus the 5th percentile divided by 3.25. And what we'll see is that in every case, the uh, standard deviation given by the pearson tukey formula is slightly bigger than, or in some cases, a great deal bigger than the standard deviation given by the classic per estimate. And this, again, has uh, been empirically validated to be a more accurate estimate, the, the classic per estimates tend to underestimate risk in the task time durations. All right, what I want to do now is take these numbers that we've used, that we've estimated in the pearson tukey formula, and embed them, use them to estimate a, a distribution the, um, for each task. And the distribution we're going to pick is the log normal distribution for no other reason than simply the log normal distribution is one I can specify with just the mean and the standard deviation. So over here on the other um, spreadsheet, I've got our Monte Carlo simulation embedded. We have the start time, task A starts at zero. The duration, these are our um, these are our random variables now that are going to be log normally distributed. And the finish time, so task A starts at zero. In this iteration of the simulation, uh, task A required 1.93 weeks and finished it 1.93 weeks. Task B, C, and D all wait until ask a, task A are finished before they can start. Then task E starts when both task B and C are finished. So that's the max of those, which in this case is task C at 14 and a half weeks, 14.63 weeks. Task F will start when task E is finished, and the end of the project is when with both task D and task F are finished, the max of those two. All right, so we have here an estimate of, um, of um, project duration for one particular instance of these random variables. Let's look quickly at uh, how you specify those. So in the log normal, um, the log normal can be specified with just a mean and a standard deviation. Uh, in crystal ball, they also allow you to specify, sorry, all you also allow you to specify a location parameter, which is like a shift. So the location parameter for the log normal distribution is a minimum value. The minimum value by default, and in many books they uh, they just assume the location parameter will be zero. The crystal ball will allow you to set a different minimum value for this if you like. We'll be using this kind of location parameter when we look later in another video at, uh, at a different distributional choice, the shifted exponential. But here we're going to stick with the default, which is the location, the minimum value for our log normal is zero. The mean we're going to get from our pearson tukey estimate of the mean, and the standard deviation we're going to get from our pearson tukey estimate of the standard deviation. So these are all pearson tukey log normals. Each task we're assuming is distributed according to a log normal distribution with the parameters estimated by the pearson tukey formula. Let's uh, go ahead and run the simulation and see what we get. Now, just right before we run it, keep in mind what we're looking for. We're looking for a number to compare to this number. This is the schedule risk according to the classic per estimate, 34%. Let's see what the schedule risk is according to the, um, the uh, pearson tukey formula when the, when the task times have been fit to a log normal distribution. Here we go.
All right, so our um, our uh, simulation is run, 10,000 iterations. We have here a distribution that, sure enough, looks it's slightly uh, longer on the right tail, positive skew. And uh, the project duration, now the average project duration, is 25.58 weeks. So we don't even finish this project now on average. Most of the time we fail to finish by the deadline, is the pearson tukey estimate of this. And the risk that we exceed the deadline is up around 51.2%. So considerably higher, 15% higher schedule risk according to this formula, and uh, this formula has been shown uh, for TAS to be more accurate. So once again, it looks like the classic PERT estimates um, underestimate uh, schedule risk. In uh, the next video, we'll look at the distributional assumptions, the, the effect of this risk estimate when we use different distributional um, assumptions and we'll see that um, the distribution we chose choose can have a big effect on our estimate of, of schedule risk.